movie review. Thank you for joining me as I review the 1947 mystery crime thriller film noir K-Day au Favre. Hey, I like that. A real go-getter. Let's get this show on the road. I am reviewing every movie that has 100% fresh rain and rotten tomatoes. I will give them all a score of 1 to 10. After I review them and score them all, I will rank them from worst to best. I started in the 1920s silent movie era, and now I'm at 1947 with K. de Ofavra, uh, which I believe translated is Goldsmith's Quarry in English. This movie stars Louise Jovet as Inspector Antone, Simone Renat as Dora, Bernard Bilar as Maurice, and Susie Delar as Jenny Lamar. I apologize if I butchered any of those names. This is a French movie. Um, it has a 100% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics and a 89% fresh rating from the audience. So when we are first introduced to this movie, we are shown uh, Jenny Lamar and Maurice. They are a married couple. Maurice is a pianist who accompanies uh, singers on the piano as they sing, so he also helps people practice. Uh, so he'll just sit there and he'll play and they'll practice, practice their song to him. Uh, in the other room is his wife, Ginny, who is uh, sitting down and next to her uh, is also a singer and he is uh, kind of touching her leg a little bit. Now, she is also a fantastic singer. She is the main singer in a chorus. Uh, her husband sees this and he goes to confront this gentleman. Now, he is not the kind of guy that kind of like blows his top, uh, but he is the kind of guy who... Uh, sees that someone might be flirting with his wife, so he's going to go have a talk with him. So he goes over there and he says, hey, like, I didn't know you could sing with your hands. Why are you talk to, touching my wife's leg? And the guy kind of laughs it off because he is really old, and he feels, I'm way too old for your wife. That's a compliment to me that you could think that I could steal your wife at such an old age. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, uh, Jenny Lamour goes on stage and we are shown her gorgeous voice. I mean, she is fantastic, uh, but she's also very scantily clad. So she is basically the kind of girl uh, that guys want to be with and girls want to be. Uh, that's kind of how what she is in this movie. So as she, when she's done singing, uh, there's a lot of guys who surround her and they're just clamoring over her. You know, they want to impress her. They want to be with her. They want to talk to her. And her husband's kind of off to the side there going, hey, I'm over here if you need me. Uh, come and get me, please. Um, and she's just talking to these men. Merci, mon bon maître. Et nous, les petits, les obscurs, les sans grade. Oh, ma vieille foire, ma vieille foire, t'as plus que j'oubliais. Oh, tu pourrais tout de même enlever ta... Uh, so then a little bit later on in the movie, we're introduced to a mutual friend of Ginny and uh, Maurice's, and this friend is Dora. Now Dora, uh, Ginny believes Dora is uh, in love with her husband, uh, which is kind of true, I believe, uh, but I also believe she is also in love with with. Uh, uh, with Jenny, so uh, she would be happy with either one of them. So they end up going out, and when they're out, they run into this big uh, film bigwig. He's like really big in the film industry, and he could really make Jenny's career take off. Um, but Dora says, you know, you gotta be careful with this guy because he really only wants one thing. He's kind of a womanizer. He has a newer, younger girl every day on his shoulders. Like this isn't really something I would pursue. And then as they're leaving, uh, the gentleman whose name is Brignan, he says, hey, Ginny, we're still on uh, for tomorrow night or whatever, whenever they're going to meet, right? Uh, we're going to meet and we're, you're going to get a big part in the movie and it's going to be great. And um, she says, yeah, of course, we're still on. L'affaire prépare. Dis donc, toi. À demain. Oui, n'est-ce pas? Oui, mais je n'avais pas dit que tu le connaissais. Il ne me l'a pas demandé. So, um... Her husband finds out about this, Maurice, and he says, oh, you can't do this. Like, this is a really bad idea. Um, that he only wants one thing. And then, uh, does he even know that we're married? Does he know you have a husband? And she says, of course he doesn't know I have a husband. If he did, that would ruin my chances of getting a movie deal. I want him to think that I'm available. Um, and this, of course, makes Maurice even more angry. And he says, you know, like, I really don't want you to go meet him. Please tell me that you won't go meet him. Brignon est un sale type, un individu dangereux. <laughs> Et non, c'est quelque chose. Une raison de plus. Crois-moi, si Brignon était un pauvre bouffe, il y a longtemps qu'on l'aurait mis à l'ombre. Ça y est, j'attendais ça. Les capitalistes, les deux sans la nuit. Alors, on peut y aller. Mais vas-y. Tu dors en jeu au riche parce que tu ne sais pas. And she basically, like, says, okay, whatever, I won't meet him. Um, so... 
And then the next day he comes home and he goes to fix himself some, some breakfast or lunch and he goes to grab a frying pan and when he grabs the frying pan, this paper falls out of it and it's the Brignan's address. <laughs> Uh, of like a place he's going to be so he says well my wife lied to me she said she wouldn't go there so he confronts his wife like right before they're supposed to have dinner his wife and Brigden are supposed to have dinner and he confronts her and he says look I'm gonna go down there and kill him like that's what I'm gonna do because he's trying to get with my wife I know he only wants you for one thing he's not going to offer you a movie deal unless he gets what he wants so I'm gonna go down to the restaurant and I'm gonna kill him so he actually uh, goes to the restaurant and he, uh, you know, he finds him. And when the door opens, Brigden says, oh, you're her husband? I usually meet the husbands the morning after. And that's when they're angry. So clearly he was only after one thing and everyone was correct. Uh, so, you know, uh, Maurice goes in there and slaps him around a bit and says, you know, next time you try to get my wife again, I'm going to kill you. Qu'est-ce que vous voulez? Qu'est-ce que ça signifie? C'est pas moi que vous attendiez, hein? Je suis le mari de Janine Lamour. C'est Marie-Marie, c'est le lendemain, je suis un peu tôt, ça Mettez-vous mon tour d'accord. Vous avez l'ironie dans ces cas-là, hein? Vous n'avez jamais pas. Um, so, you know, uh, Later on in the movie, he will, he finds out that his wife actually did go to Brignan's, uh, to his house, um, <laughs> to uh, meet him to discuss this contract. So he ends up going, he takes his car and he grabs his gun and he goes down to Brignan's house with the uh, idea that he's going to kill Brignan. But before he goes to the, before he goes to his house, he remembers that his wife uh, told him that he would not be a very good killer uh, if he ever went to go kill Brigham because he would end up leaving clues everywhere and he wouldn't have a good alibi and he would just be sloppy at it so he would get caught right away and he remembers this so he says he basically what he does is he goes to a nightclub that he is known to be at and he uh, with the idea that he's going to pretend like he was there all night and he wasn't Obviously, he didn't kill Brigden because he was at the nightclub all night. And since everyone there knows him, as long as he makes himself seen, people will agree that he was there all night if that's what he says because they know who he is. If you're a Maurice, you're not going to pay your place. But you're a metier, my dear. Hey, Nicolas, you're a good man. You're a good man. You're a good man. It's nice to come here. Now, he makes one small error while he's at the nightclub. Um, and this is also... Uh, Something that, when he, as soon as he was doing it, it reminded me of an episode of Forensic Files. There's an episode of Forensic Files where this guy uh, says he's going, he decides that he's going to kill his wife at a hotel that they're at, but he's going to make it look like an accident. So what he does is, I, I think he has someone else kill her, but what he does is when she's in the bathtub, he uh, break, he kills her, and then he breaks off the hose, the, uh, the nozzle in the bathtub, like the, the head of the bathtub, uh, to make it look like she tried to grab onto it, she slipped and she fell and drowned. Um, and while that is occurring, he goes to the person, the bellhop, the person in front of the uh, hotel, and he says, hey, look, just to let you know, my name is this, my hotel number is this, I'm going to be on a jog from this time to this time. I uh, just wanted to let you know in case I got any, <laughs> any messages, um, which, of course, uh, was a red flag when they went to go... Um, when they went to go look at this case because who does that who goes to a bellhop that they don't even know in a hotel they've never been to and he says hey just to let you know uh, i'm gonna be gone in case someone's murdered in there and I, it wasn't me tell them it wasn't me because i was gone uh, so back to the movie maurice kind of does the same thing here he goes into the nightclub and he goes up to the uh, girl who's like um, the main receptionist girl at the nightclub and he says here here's my coat and my hat i'm gonna leave this with you and i'll pick them up at the end of the night now, the only problem with this is, is that the people who are in the nightclub, none of them do this. They don't give their coat and their hat to her. They just wear them while they're in the nightclub. So this is strange behavior uh, that will come to haunt him later on. So he ends up going to the nightclub. Um, he creates his alibi. As he's trying to leave the nightclub, obviously everyone recognizes him. So he has to kind of talk to them as he's leaving. Uh, so he leaves the nightclub and then he gets in his car and he goes to kill Brigham. He has his alibi set. The girl has the, the coat, the girl has the hat, he goes to kill Brigden, but when he gets there, Brigden's already dead. Uh, so uh, he's like, well, uh, whoops. So 
he goes to leave, and when he goes to leave, someone is in the process of stealing his car, and they steal the car, and they drive off with it. Now, this poses another problem for him, because he has to uh, make his way back to the nightclub to get his hat and his coat, um, and then once he's back at the nightclub, he has to go home, and it's going to take him very a, a much longer time to get home and to the nightclub than it did the first time, because he doesn't have a car, he's walking. So um, he ends up going to the nightclub, he gets there right when it closes, he gets his coat and his hat, he walks home, and then as he's doing this, uh, we are then, um, Jenny Lamore is talking to Dora, and she's crying, and she says, Dora, I killed him. I killed, um, I killed Bergman. Uh, he was trying to make a move on me, and I grabbed the bottle and I hit him over the head, and now I have no, no idea what to do. Quoi, t'es folle Je l'ai pas fait exprès. Ça avait été chez lui, hein Oh, si j'avais su. Tu le savais, sale fille, on t'avait été prévenu. Je t'en supplie, me fais pas de peine. Je croyais que tout se passerait bien, je t'en supplie. And then she remembers that she also left her fox fur there as well. Uh, so Dora volunteers to go get the fox fur for her so that she doesn't further incriminate herself. Uh, when she gets there, she ends up wiping the bottle, the handprints off the bottle with like a rag. She gets the fur and then she comes home. So her part of the movie is pretty much done at this point. Uh, there's little interviews here and there by the detective, but she doesn't show up that much more in the movie, does Ginny or really Dora. Uh, so the rest of the movie is really focused on Maurice. Uh, so Maurice gets home and then a detective is hired to, uh, in, to investigate this case. The detective says that in this case, Money's not an option because this guy was very wealthy, so they can spend as much money as they need. We can really investigate this and give this the time that we need because we have infinite resources. Il s'est tendu un type plein aux heures, c'est avec des relations. Il paraît qu'il faudra mettre des gants. J'ai pas le moyen de m'en payer. N'oubliez pas votre part dessus, chef. Ça gèle. So he decides he's going to take the case. Uh, so he does his investigations. He goes to the nightclub um, and. First of all, he figures out that, uh, the first thing he figures out is that uh, Maurice had a fight with Bregnan uh, because they tried to, um, the, the detective tries to go back and, you know, see what Bregnan's footsteps were, where he's been, who he talked to, you know, his whereabouts, who he had conversations with. And he learns that at the restaurant, Maurice threatened to kill Bregnan. So obviously he has to go interview uh, Maurice, but then he also learns that it's possible that Jenny was having an affair with Bergen. So he has to interview her too. So he ends up interviewing Maurice a lot more than he does interviewing Jenny. And, um, you know, he asked Maurice where his footsteps were, where he went that night, where he was. He says he was at the nightclub all night. So he goes to the nightclub and he interviews the nightclub guy. And the guy who owns the nightclub says, well, like, I, I'm pretty sure he was here all night, but, you know, other people might have seen him too. I saw him uh, when we opened. I saw him when he closed. I'm assuming he was here all night. Uh, so at first, uh, the inspector, um, Antone, is accepting this. He's like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, it couldn't be him then because he was here all night. But then the girl who took his hat and coat, she hears what's going on. She says, I might have some piece of evidence for you here. He left me his hat and coat. And he left it here to an intermission, and no one ever does that. No one leaves their stuff here during intermission. They get it, they go outside, they have a smoke, they do whatever, and then they come back. And um, so the detective says, well, is it normal for someone to even give you their coat and hat? Because he looks around, he knows that everyone's wearing their coat and their hat. And she says, no, not at all. People always wear it while they're here. So, you know, red flag. Spectateur du Pont Noir, vous laissez sous moi la vestiaire? Oh, non, évidemment. Dis donc. C'est normal pour un professionnel de passer l'entracte dans la salle. Je ne sais pas, moi. He pretty much realizes that uh, Maurice wasn't there all night like he said he was. Uh, so, you know, he does some more investigating. He, uh, you know, he kind of, M Maurice eventually uh, starts to spiral a little bit because he's going to the nightclub and he's going to places and he's trying to make sure that his alibi is solid. He's trying to make sure that these people are saying what they need to say, and a lot of them aren't. <laughs> a lot of them are telling the truth, which is not what he wants. Uh, so he begins, he begins to spiral a little bit out of control to where at the end of the movie, he is um, in this state where he wants to find his passport and he wants to leave because he thinks he's going to be charged with this murder that he didn't do. Um, so there's a scene at the end where he goes home and he's rifling through these papers and 
you know, he's like, she's just sick because he thinks that he's going to go to jail. And then Jenny's all like, Dora, why is he sick? Tell me the truth. And Dora says, well, he's been like, he's been accused of murder. And Jenny's all like, why didn't you tell me? Écoute-moi bien, ça suffit. Je veux savoir la vérité. De quoi qu'il peur. Oh, après tout autant que tu saches, il était chez Brignon le soir du crime. Quoi? Oui, il avait décidé de le tuer ou de vous tuer. Which I found to be weird because, well, not really. Uh, they live together, you know, they're a couple, yet she doesn't know that he is being questioned and wanted for this murder that she apparently has now forgotten about because she doesn't really care that it happened. Um, well, maybe, I mean, she's interviewed as well throughout the movie, but she never lets on that she knows what happened or she doesn't even really seem to, like, care that it happened. Um, so she says, you know, uh, Jenny says, I'm going to turn myself in. That way he doesn't get, you know, I can't let him take the fall because I'm the one who actually killed the guy. Qu'est-ce que tu fais Je veux bien, je prépare mes affaires, je vais à la police. C'est de la folie Je veux pas laisser arrêter Maurice, ça peur. On n'est pas encore là tout de même. Uh, they end up bringing Maurice into the precinct and they, uh, you know, they take, they interview him and they run over everything again, like tell us your story again, tell us what happened, and they go at this for hours, and then um, they say, well, how, like, was this, bef like, did all this happen before or after your car was stolen? And he says, my car, and like, your car was stolen, wasn't it? And he's like, yeah, it was. Like, well, why didn't you tell us this? And he's like, because uh, I didn't think it would matter. Like, you're never gonna find my car, it's gone. And they said, well, what if we told you we did find your car? He says, oh, that's great news. Avenue 15, vous aviez déjà misé votre voiture au garage, naturellement. Alors, on ne vous l'avait pas encore volé. Volé On vous l'a volé, oui ou non Oui. Alors, pourquoi n'avez-vous pas porté plainte Fantastic. And then, after that, they decide that they are going to uh, arrest him because they keep, they keep pushing him and keep pushing him. And finally, he says, yes, I killed, I went to kill him. I brought a gun. I went to kill him, but he was already dead. And they're like, okay, finally, we're getting somewhere. Comment c'est le début, hein? Ok, on est parti de chez toi. Non, non, c'est le tirer plus rien. Pour une fille, je répondrai plus. Oui, j'y étais. Oui, j'ai voulu le tenir. Il était mort. Il était mort, vous comprenez? Il était mort. Je crois bien qu'on comprend. We can finally, like, put, like, hold you in jail for a little while while we continue the investigation. Do, do you have a gun? He says, that, yes, I have a gun. It's at the house. Here's where it is. Um, so they end up taking his shoelaces and his tie so he can't harm himself while he's in jail. They put him in jail, and then while he's in jail, he has a watch on, and he ends up breaking the, the glass on the watch, and he tries to kill himself by cutting his wrist, uh, but he's not successful. I call my first communion. Just a bit of a beat. What? Uh, while this is going on, they're interviewing Dora, and um, Dora is telling them that she killed Maury, or she killed uh, Brignan, and she did it with a bottle on his head, <laughs> which is the same thing Jenny said. She also killed him by hitting him with a bottle. And the guy, the, the investigator says, well, uh, I know you're lying to me because the guy had a bullet in his, in his chest. Vous avez arrêté Jenny? Elle a avoué. C'est faux, elle ment. C'est moi qui ai tué Brignon. Tiens, tiens. Oui, je l'ai assommé avec une bouteille de champagne et je... Et il est mort d'une balle de revolver dans le cœur, hein? Comme c'est curieux. Qu'est-ce que vous dites? Je dis que j'en ai marre de toutes vos cachotteries. Martino n'a pas tué Brignon et sa femme. Which makes sense because I was trying to figure out why they asked Maurice if he had a gun when the method of killing the guy was a bottle over the head. It didn't make any sense. But the investigator says he had a bullet in him and that's what killed him. So, uh, okay. <laughs> um, so who is it then? So he says, I think I have a pretty good idea of who it was. Uh, I'm gonna go interview him right now. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just uh, you know, I'm out of ideas here. I have no idea. I was led to believe that it was the wife. And then I was led to believe that he was going to go to jail for it. And he tried to commit suicide over it. And at the end of the movie, uh, they show the inspector interviewing the guy who stole Maurice's car. He's the one who did the murder. La porte était ouverte, tu es entré, moi on sait jamais. C'était peut-être la bonne occasion. Et puis le vla, votre brignon, la figure toute barbouillée qui se met à gueuler au secours. J'ai eu les fois, quoi, j'ai tiré. Oh, je sais bien, c'est peut-être pas du bon boulot, mais la frousse, ça se commande pas. 
Uh, so um, they end up getting him to admit that he's the one who did the murder. Uh, they tell Maurice that it wasn't his gun. And at the end of the movie, it's Christmas, and Maurice and Jenny uh, go up to their room where they're going to have a lot of rest and relaxation. And uh, that's the end of the movie. That's the whole thing. That's it. In a nutshell. So what do I think of this movie? Well, I thought this movie was good. Uh, it's not as great as a lot of uh, film noirs that I've seen before. And to be honest, I don't even, I wouldn't even say this is a film noir, basically because there's no real film fatale in this movie, which is also, which is one of the problems I have. Uh, so Ginny Lamore, her character played by Susie Delar, is, I thought she was great. Um, very solid opening with her in the movie, with her singing, um, with the fact that she, uh, you know, the men adore her, the women want to be her. Uh, you know, it's a very solid opening with her. And I thought that the movie was going to basically revolve around her. She was going to play a bigger role in this movie than she actually did. She has, like, the first half of the movie, and then she disappears for a while. And that's just not what, like, a film noir does. There has to be a female who's, like, really driving the action. She's driving the investigation. She's in the, she's driving all the things that are happening. And she's driving, you know, what the actions that the man is taking. And sure, in the beginning, yes, but uh, in the middle and at the end, not really. It's more focused on Maurice and what Maurice is doing. Um, I, I thought he was, a, I thought Maurice Bernard Belhar uh, is a very is a very good actor. Um, I definitely didn't think that when he was on screen that he was as strong as when Susie was on screen. I thought she um, was able to captivate the audience more, not because how she's dressed. I really, I'm not a fan of that. Um, you know, she can be alluring. I mean, if you look at the Lady Eve, uh, Barbara Stanswick, I think, is one of the greatest, uh, the greatest film fatales in that movie. She's fantastic. And she doesn't have to dress this way, the, the way that Susie is dressing. It's just through her acting and through her actions and what she's doing um, that she's commanding the camera. She's commanding the scene. So I wish uh, we could have had more of that with Susie than just being scantily being clad and, you know, commanding the camera in that manner. Um, but then I felt like when she's not on screen, the action is kind of stunted. The detective is good, but it, it, I have a problem. It's like when I watched the young Mr. Lincoln, where at the end of the movie, he knows who did it. He knows how it happened, but there's no way anyone else would know that. I actually forgot at the end of the movie that the guy's car was even stolen and that this was even a possibility. It makes sense at the end because the guy who stole his car, you know, he was probably there first and he was looking for a way out. And then he watched Maurice go into the building and while Maurice was going to the building, he worked on stealing his car. It makes sense. And plus, Brignan was rich. So, you know, if you're flaunting that you're rich, people are going to want to steal from you, kill you, take your stuff. Especially if they see that you're getting hit over the head with something and that you're incapacitated, finish the job and, and take the stuff. That's what he did. Uh, it makes sense, but I just felt cheated at the end of the movie. I really did. Uh, because um, I really, you know, I really wanted it to be one of them. <laughs> I don't know why, but I really wanted it to be one of them. Um, I, at the beginning of the movie, I really hated Maurice because he seemed like he was just going to be this uh, this guy who is very jealous. There's been so many movies that I've seen with this where there's just this jealous guy who makes the girl's life miserable because of his jealousy. Uh, but then towards the end of the movie, I started to, you know, I sympathize with him a lot because he didn't actually do it, but he uh, is not able to prove he did it because, like his wife said, he's really good at, he's really terrible at creating an alibi and really terrible at getting away with it. And she was right. And um, so he's not able to prove that he didn't do it. Uh, and he's just kind of like, now he's spread out. I mean, it's his fault. He wanted to go kill the guy. There's other ways to deal with this kind of stuff. But now he's like, he's stuck in the situation where there's nothing he can do. And he keeps, and the fact that he's withholding information and the fact that he's lying to the cops, it's making, to the detective, it's making the detective job actually harder to find who did it because, you know, he doesn't have all the information he needs because, uh, Maurice thinks he's going to get caught, even though he's, he's not going to. Uh, so, you know, it's a real, like, it's kind of a catch-22, I guess. And, you know, I just wish that um, that Jenny was involved more in this movie. Uh, I really wish there were more scenes with her. Other than that, it's a good movie. I fell victim to one of the classic blunders, and it has nothing to do with the land of war in Asia. Uh, the classic blunder was that I 
like believed exactly what was on screen. So I didn't question anything really. I believed that Jenny actually killed him and I believed that Maurice was actually the one who was taking the heat for it. Uh, never did I think that one of them didn't do it. So at the end of the movie, I was shocked when, when neither one of them did it, when it was a gun um, that killed him and not the bottle. And you know, uh, it was surprising, but you know, after the first few minutes of shock, I felt really cheated a little bit that I, I put all my, um, you know, I, I felt like I was really invested in these characters. I was really invested in what was going on and I just needed one of them to be guilty and one of them to be wrong and one of them to like go to prison or do whatever and, you know, for it to end that way. And that's what I thought was going to happen. That's what I wanted to happen and it didn't happen. Uh, so I felt, like I said, I felt cheated at the end. Other than that, it had really great acting. Uh, the ending was a surprise to me, so I can't fault it that much. It was a surprise, and that's what it wanted to be. Um, the story was good. Uh, everything everything was great. And even, I mean, like I said, uh, Susie Delar is a fantastic singer. I really hope it's her singing in this movie, and it's not a West Side Story thing where she's not actually singing. Um, but she was fantastic. And uh, if she could have just done that periodically more throughout the movie, it would have been great. Uh, but it, I, I would say it's a good movie. It's not a great movie, but it's a good movie. And I will still give it an 8 out of 10. So for me, that's not... 9 and 10 is the great tier. And then 8 is kind of, you know, good. And, and it goes down as we go. Uh, but I will give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, thank you, and I hope you will join me for my next review, which will be uh, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Hope you have a great day.